Hi and welcome to this month's tutorial. I'm Tess from Sisters in Stitch and I will be showing you how to make this darling little make that is the blooming bubble. This was actually made as a Christmas ornament initially but since then I have used it as a pin cushion, I have used it for wall hangings, for baby mobiles. So whatever you imagine it can become, it will. So <laughs> I hope you will have fun and maybe learn a trick or two. To make this bubble, all you will need is four colors of yarn. I have used Must Haves by Yarn and Color. A 2.25 millimeter hook for the center and for the body. And then I have been using a size larger hook, a three millimeter for creating a softer shape and feel to the petals and to the leaves. You can use whatever yarn you want, whatever hooks you need, just experiment around with them and see what suits you. You will also need a darning needle, a scissor, two stitch markers to help you out and a little bit of toy stuffing. And if you want to know more about the make and want to see the written instructions, you can find them on our homepage at sistersinstitch.com. Okay? So grab your things and meet me up for round number one. So to begin, we start off with a magic circle. You can also use a chain circle start if you want to. But I find this a little bit easier. So into the circle, we are going to work seven single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There we go. So we have our seven little single crochets. So we are going to pull the tail back down into the center of the ring and pulling tight. And to finish this round, we are simply going to work a slip stitch into that very first single crochet of the round, okay? So I have been quick and hide my ends on the back and just to make sure that it is not in the way now that I'm going to show you. But you can wait until the next round to finish your end if you want to. So how this round will be is that we are creating this gorgeous center that is the popcorns. And to make a popcorn you need four double crochets. So I'm just making a standing double crochet as my first. You can do a chain two or three to the height of a double crochet of course, if you prefer that. And then I'm making three more here in the same stitch, so four in total, like that. And then I'm slightly raising the loop so I don't drop it. Go back into that first double crochet that is the fake one actually. It will be your chain two or three if you have started with that. And then just grabbing the loop again and pulling through effortlessly <laughs> and then we are chaining one to close. So we are going to do this simple little step in all six remaining stitches. So I will do one more with you and then you'll be on your own. So make four double crochets into the next stitch to form a popcorn. Three and four. Like that dropping the loop, going back into the first double crochet of the four, grabbing the loop again, tighten and pull through. And then close with the chain. So do that four, five more times <laughs> and meet me up to close this. So I just finished my very last popcorn. So now I have seven around here and I did the closing chain. And what I will do now is simply, do you see the center of the popcorn? Just make a slip stitch in there. There we go. Just to tighten it up. And the center, as you can tell, it's a little bit like almost a square shape or a triangular shape. So you're heading into the center of that just to make sure that it will stay in place. And then you just go down into the ring 
and secure your ends, okay? So cut the thread, grab a needle and fasten off and we'll meet up for round number three. So I'm back, I'm with the color that I'm choosing for my balloon. This is Ecru, I think. It's a gorgeous, a little bit honey colored birch thing. It's lovely. <laughs> so we are now starting to build the body of the balloon. We will actually make up half of the balloon um, before we are beginning the flower petals and leaves. So this will just make it easier to, to finish now than afterwards when we are full with blooming things and stuff. <laughs> so we are actually going to start this round, not in the popcorns, but in the chain spaces between the popcorns. So around the chain one, the closing chain ones that you did in the previous round, attach your yarn and make a standing double crochet or a slip stitch chain two or three up to the height of a double crochet like that. And then go directly in and make another. So in between the popcorns, around the chain one space. And now this is all that we're actually going to do. So we are going to make seven sets of two double crochets in between the popcorns, skipping all popcorns. Just going around and around. It's such a rainy day today, so it's really nice to just sit in here and enjoy a little crocheting before the weekend begins. There we go. The final little double crochet. So to close this round, as you can tell, this is almost like a little hat. Don't worry, it's supposed to be like that. We are building some height to add our petals and leaves to. So we are going to close it by slip stitching back into the very first fake double crochet, <laughs> the one and only. So if you have a chain two or three, slip stitch in the top of that. And what we are doing now, before I forget, so that these are the last double crochets that we did of the round. We are going to be starting in these further on and when we are doing the leaves. So you take a stitch marker and can you tell, we have like, here is the head, here is the upper body, here's the arms. So through the legs of the stitches, just grab that little strand of yarn in here, in between them, just put your stitch marker because we're going to place stitches there further on. So by doing that, we are making sure that we are getting in at the very, very right point. I'm trying to see if I have a bubble here. I do have a bubble here. Wait two seconds. Okay, so what this will do is that it will make sure that our petals begins where they are supposed to, our leaves, I mean. Uh, because when we are coming to this point, we want uh, the number of stitches to be correct. So it's easy to uh, attach these to the bubble. So make sure to really put the stitch mark in the right place and we'll save a lot of time and headache, okay? <laughs> so do that and meet me up for the next round. To begin our next round, we are simply chaining one so we get the proper height. This is not a stitch, it's just a fake stitch. <laughs> and then into the very first double crochet, we're working a single crochet. And then we're doing a single crochet increase in the next. So we will be increasing with seven stitches for this round. So one single crochet in the next stitch, a single crochet increase in the next. A single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next, which is the increase. So keep on doing that and meet me up to close, okay? Okay, so I'm just making my final single crochet increase here. And you should now have 21 single crochets around. So make sure that you have that. And then we are actually not gonna slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. We are going to continue this balloon 
bubble thing uh, <laughs> in a spiral, working in a spiral. So just, just simple as this, hopefully simpler. You are just going right in and making a single crochet. This is the first stitch of the row. And then you go ahead and do a single crochet in the next stitch. And then you pause slightly, grabbing your stitch marker and marking that very first single crochet that we made so that you know where to stop. So we have done one and two single crochets. Now we're doing a single crochet increase. This is the pattern for it. Yes, simply, simply doing single crochet in the next two stitches and then a single crochet increase. So do that all the way around. One single crochet in the next two stitches, then a single increase in the next, and you will end up with 28 single crochets. And I'll show you the next round. So see you then. So I just finished my last single crochet increase and we are back to where we started. So I'm just taking out that stitch marker, actually sitting out a little bit so you can tell. Simply just do a single crochet increase into the first stitch. We're spreading the increases out to make it a little bit rounder. And then pause and put the stitch marker back into the first stitch. Always good to know where you are. And then you are simply going to work a single crochet in the next three stitches, okay? So one. two and three and then a single crochet increase in the next and then single crochet in the next three stitches so keep on doing this and this time since we've begun with the increase you will end with three single crochets so don't forget that you did that so you get worried <laughs> but you can always do a stitch count so after this round you should have sneak peek checking 35 single crochets okay so do that and meet me up for round number seven so it will not be a surprise to you that we are keeping on in the same method if you're finding your project gapping then you need to tighten your tension or go down a hook size because you want it to be very tight since we're going to stuff it quite hard. You don't want the stuffing to show at the end. So make sure that you have a tight tension throughout, okay? So for the round number seven, we are going to make a single crochet in the next four stitches and then a single crochet increase. So simply do one and two as usual and then stop and put back your stitch marker. I'm gonna be on you on that stitch marker because it makes life so much easier. And then do the next two as well. So you have four single crochets from the starting point. And then make a single crochet increase here in the next. And then you make a single crochet in the next four stitches followed by a single increase and so on and so on. And then you should have 42 single crochets before round number eight. Okay, see you then. So we are on to the final round of the bubble body until we start with the flower. So we are going to do one more increasing row and then we are starting to do the really fun stuff, okay? So work three single, one single crochet over the next three stitches, stopping after two, it's a good rule, then you know where to place your stitch marker. And then make the one more here. And then do a single crochet increase. And as I said before, we are doing this to spread out the increases throughout the project so it keeps on a quite round shape. So now we are simply doing a single crochet in the next five stitches. So one, and two and three four and five and then we do a single crochet increase 
So work your five stitches with single crochets and then an increase uh, all the way around. And remember, as we did start with three single crochets, you will end with two. So don't worry when you come up here and only have two stitches left. It's all as it should. So do that and don't cut the thread. We are going to keep it on our project and I'll show you what to do next. Okay. should now have 49 stitches, okay? And if you have so, take out your little hook from the yarn and attach the stitch marker to the very last stitch that you just made. Just secure it in one of the other stitches over here. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. And just close it because you want this to stay secure because now we are working on the flower but we are not cutting the yarn. We want this to be a solid piece. So I'm just putting it over here and continuing on with the flower. That is part two, which is the flower petals, yeah. So go and grab your larger sized hook. This was the 2.25. I will now switch over to a three millimeter hook and meet me up for round number nine. Hi, so I totally changed my mind. I'm actually going to keep the thinner hook just to show you how to do because they are quite tight now and I don't think my three millimeter would go in there very smoothly. Um, because we are working in the popcorn, in each popcorn and leaving every other stitcher um, be. So take your hook, grab your colors yarn. I have chosen to use this pearly pink color that is absolutely gorgeous. So now what we are doing is this section, these petals that are overlapping the center, followed by the second layer of petals. And then finally we will go on to the leaves. But this is where we are at the point. So you can begin in any popcorn you want to. I prefer to keep them towards the back, the starting points I mean. So I will go in uh, not the first but the second popcorn and just go into the center. Do you remember that I said when we were closing the, the second round that it's like a square and in the center of the square is where you want to be. So just grab your hook and put it in there and make a slip stitch. Like that. There we go. And now if you're having your larger size hook, you can do a chain two. I think I need to make a chain three because these are smaller. Let's see. Now it works. The, the main thing is that the number of chains that you do should not snug your project. You want them a little bit loose. So if you're finding it too tight, you can simply just add a chain to it. But I'm changing two between the popcorns now, okay? Am I right? Yes, I'm right. There we go. So just chain two. If you are tighter, please add a chain. If you are looser, keep the two. <laughs> so this is all you do. You just chain two, slip stitch in the center of the next popcorn. As you can tell, I'm folding down my work so I can easily, more easily, um, get into it. And then chaining two again quite loosely and just move my way around. So do that and meet me up to close, okay? Yay! <laughs> it worked! So I've done my final chain two and to close this round I simply slip stitch into the very first slip stitch that we made that is placed in the popcorn. So just go in there and make a slip stitch and then raise your loop because now we need the bigger sized hook because we want our pedals to be a little bit looser than the center so let's see oh and to keep everything in order keep the the bubble thread upwards and then you can have the other one to the side it's so much easier so for round number 10, we are going to have some pedal fun. So we are slip stitching into the chain two space. And then we are working a half double crochet. If you think this is tricky, you can just chain one stitch, but I'm just yarning over and going back down into the chain, pulling up a loop, 
yarn over again and pull through. That is my fake half double crochet. <laughs> and then you do a double crochet and another half double crochet and then a slip stitch back into the same chain two space. So it will look like this. You have a tiny little beginning of a pedal, slip stitch, half double crochet, double crochet, half double crochet and slip stitch. I will do one more with you and then I think you will do great by yourself here. So just don't go into the chain but into the chain space with a slip stitch. Do a half double crochet, do a double crochet, another half double crochet and then a slip stitch. And you are of course skipping the slip stitches that are placed in the popcorn. You're only working in the chain two spaces, okay? So do that five more times and meet me up to close the round and begin the next. So I made my final slip stitch and to close this round we are simply slip stitching into the first slip stitch of the round. A lot of slip stitching here. <laughs> and there we have it. This is the final round 11. No, 10. And now we're heading into round 11. Okay. 11, we are starting with a slip stitch in the half double crochet. We're continuing on with the same yarn, the same hook. Like that. And then in the DC, the double crochet, we are doing two single crochets. And we are doing a picot 2b so we are chaining two and then if you can tell here is the front loop of the single crochet that we did previous previously to it and then the first the left leg of it so that is how we do a picot 2b it anchors it better than if you do it in the first chain there we go and then two more single crochets into the same double crochet that we are in Okay, and then we are slip stitching in the next half double crochet. And for this round, we are skipping all slip stitches. So skip those two, and then in the next half double crochet, work a slip stitch. We're just getting them closer together and also helping them then to shape and fold inwards towards the center. So in the next stitch, make two single crochets a pico 2b which was chaining two and slip stitching through the front loop and the left leg of the single crochet before there we go and then two more single crochets back into the double crochet like that and then we are slip stitching in the next half double crochet and skipping the single crochets the slip stitches. So do that and meet me up to finish this round, okay? Okay, so I just finished my last slip stitch in the half double crochet and to close this round we're simply doing a slip stitch into the first slip stitch. So you can count backwards from the picot, one, two, three, and there you should have the slip stitch that you should go into. Easy peasy. So there we go! And this looks like a star now, I know. <laughs> but as we do our next row, the leaves, the petals will fall into place, I promise you. So don't worry, it's a superstar and so are you for coming all this way. So now we are doing the final petal row. Okay, so we have just gone to the back side and if you just spread a little bit of the pedal layers you can tell that here is the slip stitches that we made around the chain one space earlier on and it's in this little space that we want to go now so you can find it if you just put your finger on it and pull it upwards you can find the stitch so you go through the back loop of the slip stitch actually but you find this vertical, no, sorry, horizontal line. And here is where we will be placing our new slip stitches, okay? So take it slow and steady, don't rush. 
just have fun with it and we will be fine oh there we go <laughs> lot of threads here so what we will do now as i said we we had done the slip stitch that joined the pedals we have chained one to reach back down this is not a stitch it's just a i want to get there <laughs> stitch so this doesn't count for this round as another so here we go into that place if you find it too tricky you can go down a hook size too but i think i will be fine this time so we are slip stitching in here i'm just checking how many chains i have said that i want to do and it's three chains this time so one two three and then just fold it upwards and you will find it you can go through more than one bar if you want to, if you find a place that works with it if you feel like you want to secure it a little bit more but i'm i'm fine with this so just tighten your slip stitches and then chaining three folding your work this is a fiddle round so take it nice and slow and here we go chain my last three because here is my starting chain so to close this round and finish the seven chain space is simply slip stitching into that slip stitch so not into the chain one that we made to go back down but into the initial slip stitch and now we are working only in the chain spaces that we just created so skipping the slip stitches that are holding them in place and go in and do a slip stitch into the first one and then you're doing a half double crochet a double crochet a treble so yarn over twice go through two loops at a time and then you do a double crochet and a half double crochet there we go and a single crochet no sorry not a single crochet we are doing a slip stitch there we go okay so what we did was slip stitch half double double treble double half double slip stitch okay so we're doing this in each seven chain space so just find your thread and work a slip stitch into the next one and a half double crochet a double crochet yarn over twice for a treble keep on pulling through two there we go double crochet half double crochet and the slip stitch there we go it's going to be so cute so keep on doing that for the next five chain spaces and slip stitch into the first slip stitch to close the round or join with an invisible join so you're fastening off and tying off your ends because now we are doing the pedals no the leaves next so do that and meet me up have fun Hi again so i just finished my very last slip stitch of the pedals and it looks like this and i thought maybe i shouldn't leave you by yourselves sorry just gotta find my scissor but i will actually show you how to fasten off well uh, it's always lovely to talk to you too so <laughs> a win-win situation so when you have done your final slip stitch here and cut the yarn you simply pull the yarn out and threading your needle and then I'm doing an invisible join to the second stitch, which is the half double crochet. So going down there, back down the back loop and third loop. And then just going through maybe in here. Yes, we can do that. So I'm just going into the thickest part of the closest by round in the same color and just work back and forth a little bit not tugging too much because we don't want to misshape the pedal we just want it to just want it to be there so if you haven't 
fastening off your starting thread of this color sieve this side too and maybe the other colors too because now it's going to be a little bit more tricky to to do that later on okay so it looks like this it looks like a little mini floating maybe a, a water lily <laughs> Uh, it will be cute like this also, but we have to finish this bubble. It's so much fun to do these next rows because it's going to go quickly new now. After the leaves have been finished, this part goes in no time. So hang in there, take some tea and meet me up for round number 13, 14, 14. So are you ready to do the hard part, which is hopefully having kept your stitch marker in place here. We are going to begin in the last two double crochets of the first round of the bubble body. I think it's round number three. And we are going to place our slip stitch in there. If you haven't, or if there has been some kind of mix up or something that has happened and you can't find them, it's okay. The only thing is that you have to adjust where to pinpoint the pedals later, but I'll show you how to do that. But it is the first set after where you placed your stitch marker, not before, after. So just join here with a slip stitch. Sorry, a little bit tricky. There we go. Just tighten the starting end. There we go. And then we are chaining three. And then we are going into the next two legs of the body. If you feel like this is tricky, you can go down a hook size. Beware that you don't have too tight of chain stitches in between them. So just chain three and go through the left side of legs. This is tricky to show on camera. I promise you that this are easier when you sit in your couch and just take a sip of tea in between if you <laughs> if you find them tricky so yeah okay so what you do is you are going through i'll show you once more you are going through the legs of the double crochets so not the head not the arm but the legs so go through those two can you tell it's starting to be a little bit dark in here but go through there and place a slip stitch and the chain three in between up until the very last set okay so only do this for five times and then i will show you how to continue okay so you should now have five chain spaces they're quite oops hidden underneath here as you can tell they are not that visible uh, and now what you will do, we only need six chain spaces and if we do one more of these chain three and going into the next we will have seven. So don't do that. Just simply chain four instead of the three that you have done previously. And then just slip stitch into the first slip stitch of the round. Totally ignoring these, very rudely, I know, but it can't be helped. We only need six chain spaces. So. I'm just trying to find the right stitch here. There we go. And just like that. So that you couldn't see. But <laughs> I have now connected all six chain spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, and along six. So do that and meet me up for round number 15. So for round number 15, we are doing these lovely little leaves and they are worked over two chain spaces so we will be working in half in one and the other half in the next keeping all the way around so i hope you are finding this clear we also have a written instruction if that's helpful it's on our home page at sistersinstitch.com to help you out if you need so to begin this round, we are slip stitching into the chain three spaces that are next. And then we are doing a single crochet, a half double crochet, a double crochet, 
times 2. And then two trebles, yarn over twice, back into the same first chain three space, and a second one, and then a picot three B. So we are chaining three stitches and then slip stitching through the head and the first one to the left there. Okay? So it will look like this. It has a lovely little leaf shape already. So you have your slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, two double crochets, two trebles, and then the pico 3B. And now we are done with this chain space and are moving on to the next one. So just make sure that you're going into the right and we are doing, we are mirroring it down minus the pico. So two trebles into the next chain space one, two, two half double crochets, one and two, a half double crochet, a single crochet, scooch them over if it's tightly, and then a slip stitch. So we're skipping the slip stitches that holds the chain spaces in place but look it's so cute absolutely adorable <laughs> totally biased but it's absolutely adorable so what we do now is just doing the beginning of a pedal again so slip stitch into the next chain space work a single crochet half double crochet two double crochets two trebles Yarn over twice, then take two off at a time, like that, and then make a picot 3B by chaining three and grabbing more yarn <laughs> and slip stitching through the previous stitch, the head and the left side. There we go, like that. And then we are done with this chain space, so we're skipping the slip stitch that holds it and just work a treble into the next, another treble, so we have two, two double crochets, one and two, a half double crochet and scooching them over a little tiny bit single crochet and the slip stitch. Do this one more time and then close with an invisible joint to the second stitch which is, it's this, which is the single crochet and just fasten off back here, back and forth a few times. So do that and meet me up to continue on with the ball. Thank you! So well done! Done. You have finished the leaves, you have fastening off your ends, you have three leaves worked over six chain spaces and it should look something like this. So as you can tell these are folding in, these are popping around and now we are going to create this little bobble shape that is this one. So what we will do for this round is that we will attach our leaves to the bubble while working on the bubble and then for the next coming rounds we are simply going to decrease down to the very end. Okay, so we are switching the hooks since we are working on the body we are switching the hooks back to the smaller size, in my case the 2.25 millimeter hook like this and just find that purple stitch marker that I used. Just put it out slightly. There we go. There we go. And now if you have done it correctly you should have five stitches up until the pedals here. If you don't have it don't panic. What you can do is to just do as I do, but change it after where your pedal falls. So if you have 10 stitches to yours, it's okay. You just have to make it work. So 
What you will do now is in the next five stitches, work a simple single crochet. One, two, stop and put your stitch marker back into the first one of the two. So you know where to begin. Three, four, almost. <laughs> Always interesting going from a larger exercise down to a smaller one. And then five. So there we go. We have five single crochets. And as you can tell, this will fall into place here. Like that. So we are now doing something that I'm calling, and I'm going to fasten this so this doesn't go anywhere. We are going to do something that I'm calling an attaching single crochet. So we are going to attach the leaf on the back side of the leaf. So it won't be visible from the front, but it will keep it in place, safe and secure. So don't worry, this is really, really simple. It's just, you go into the next stitch, just as you would, as you do as a normal single crochet, grab the yarn and pull through. You have now two loops of your working yarn on your hook. And now you're simply taking your little leaf here. And let's see if I can find my needle. If you look at it, you have the bicot and you have the single crochet that you attached it to. Do you see these two little bars here? If you're holding it like that, they are right there when you fold it up. Here is where we will place our hook. So the two little bars that holds the bicot. So take your hook and go through those two, one and should go easy. There we go, two. So now we suddenly find ourselves with four little bars on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all four. You can just tilt your hook down and pull through. And there you have it. It's attached. <laughs> so now don't miss the first stitch after the pedal, the leaf. Why is this so hard to keep track of? After the leaf, the first single crochet, make a single crochet in that and the next 13, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, and 13. There we go. And now, as you can tell, this will fall in place here. So it's not that it's falling in place straight, but when you are folding it a bit, then it's where it will hit its spot. So if you haven't uh, the proper stitch count up towards, you can just fold your work a little bit and you'll see which stitch you need to attach it to, okay? Drop me a message or something and I'll help you out. <laughs> so start off as a normal single crochet. Go back up to your pedal, find the two bars. There we go. Two bars on the back side of it. Having four loops on your hook now. And then just pull through them all like that. And by making a single crochet in the next stitch, you are closing this. So make a single crochet in the next stitch and in the next 16, 15. So 16 in total. So one, that was your first, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, keep your tension. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. There we have it. Fifteen and the sixteenth. Like that. Can you tell it's starting to get a really lovely shape now? 
So in the next stitch, make an attaching single crochet. So go down as a normal, grabbing the two bars there, grabbing the yarn and pulling through all four loops. There we go. And now we just make a single crochet in each remaining stitch of the round, which in my case and should be in your case are 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11? <laughs> I should have had 12. Okay, so I'll just double check my stitch count. I must have missed a stitch somewhere. Um, I'll do that and get back to you, okay? <laughs> you should have 12 on the end. <laughs> okay, so I had missed one right after the bico. Um, so it's okay. Stuff like that happens all the time. <laughs> So for round number 17, we are going to decrease. We're starting to bubble up our bubble. So in the next three stitches, make a single crochet. So one, two, there we go. And put the stitch marker in it. There we go. And then we are making the third now I have to think there we go three and then we do an invisible single crochet decrease I don't know if you have done those before but this is how I do it uh, we are turning two stitches into one we are reducing the number of stitches of this row so I just go through the front loop of the next stitch and the stitch after that one so those two stitches that I want to decrease I go through the front loops Grab the yarn and pulling through. Oh, I'll have to do that again, sorry. <laughs> so, okay, so through the front loops, this usually goes super smoothly. There we go, there we go. And then I just simply finish this as a single crochet, like that. So now I'm doing a single crochet in the next five stitches. So one, two, even the Attaching single crochets, get a single crochet. Two, three, four, five, and then do an invisible single crochet decrease by going through the front loops of the two following stitches, grabbing the yarn and pulling through both. That is how smoothly it usually goes and finish off like a normal single crochet. So do that all the way around. And since we began with three single crochets, you should have two left when coming up towards the end and then make two single crochets in those. So at the end, you should have 42 single crochets around after finishing this round, okay? Okay, so I'm at my last invisible single crochet decrease and as calculated, I have two stitches left, so I sorted it out the last time. Yay! <laughs> My missing 12th stitch is found again. So great. <laughs> so as you can tell, if you want to, you can continue just working it downwards and you would have a lovely little egg cozy or something, but we are doing bubbles here, so we are just keep on with the decreasing rounds. Okay, so for round number 18, we are keeping on with the decreasing. So in the next four stitches, make a single crochet. One, two, you guessed it, pause and put in your stitch marker. Three, and four, there we go. And then do an invisible decrease over the next two like that and then work a single crochet in the next four stitches two three and four 
and an invisible decrease over the next two and so on and so on for this entire round so you should have 35 stitches coming around okay really close to the end now so keep on and see you in round number 19 so we're trying to spread out the decreases too so they don't start gapping so we are going to do a single decrease as our beginning like that but steadier <laughs> and then we're doing a single crochet over the next three stitches so one two and then I did one too many but I remember it so put it in your single crochet decrease there we go and just carry on with making three single cra no sorry what where am i one one two and then one more single crochet sorry single crochet invisible decrease single crochet in the next three stitches invisible single crochet increase over the next two one single crochet in the next three Okay, all the way around, keep on doing that and you will have 28 stitches, okay? Don't listen to me. <laughs> so it's rapidly closing up here, can you tell? So we're doing one more time here and then we are starting to stop, okay? So what you will do now is making a single crochet in the next two stitches followed by an invisible decrease. So two single crochets, stitch marker, and a decrease. Single crochet in the next two stitches. There we go, one. Think about your tension now so you don't drop it. You want it to be firm all the way around. You don't want the stuffing to show in the end. So if you're feeling like you're getting tired, take a little break and do some hand movements and just tighten your, loosen your grip, sorry, <laughs> to tighten your tension. Um, or just go down at hook size. So just keep on doing two single crochets over the next two stitches, one, no, sorry, two single crochets in the next two stitches, then a single, invisible single decrease over the next two okay you know the drill keep up <laughs> and you will end up with 21 single crochets and then we start to stuff okay so do that and meet me up okay so i'm just placing a stitch marker into my loop so i don't drop it uh, you should now have 21 stitches around and as you can tell it's almost done actually so what we will do now is just doing the initial stuffing, we will stuff more, but just take a little bit of toy stuffing. I just rub it uh, round in my hand so it gets a little bit of a shape, it's easier than to get it in. I think, I don't know if it makes a difference, but it does for me. So just, I'm just using my fingers to shove it in there. There we go. And then you don't want to overstuff it because you don't want to catch this when you are working your next rounds. But you don't want to have to push everything in at the very end because that is really, really tricky. Okay, so once you have done that and feel happy about it, just keep it down and away from the stitches while you work by pressing your fingers on it and moving alongside as you go. Okay, I'll show you. So for the next round, we are keeping up with the increase, the decreases. So for the next round, we are keeping up with the decreases. And this time we are doing one single crochet in the next stitch and then a single decrease over the next two. So we are doing that seven times, which means we will end up with 14 stitches of this round, decreasing by seven each time. So I'm just doing the first one and I'm actually placing a stitch mark in it already because I think it's a little bit tricky to do when I have decreases. I don't want to drop the tension. So do a decrease over the next two like that. 
and then I just keep on moving my finger, pressing down, making sure that I'm grabbing my finger <laughs> rather than the stuffing. So single crochet in the next and then a decrease over the next two because it's so easy to, to snag your hook in the stuffing and then you will get stuffing peeking through and you don't want that. So you just take it slow and steady, just decrease, tighten, pull through, tighten and just keep on doing this all the way around until you have 14 stitches. Okay, so if you stuffed very loosely, you can add a little stuffing in here now or do it halfway around the next round because now we are decreasing our final little round and it will become from 14 down to 7 stitches. So I was quite happy with the stuffing I did the previous row. So I will just wait a little bit with the stuffing. So if you're happy, continue on and do invisible decreases over the next 14 stitches. So just keep the tight tension. I'm just doing one and then putting my stitch mark in so I don't have to stop more times than necessary. So just, and now the bars are quite visible so it should be easier to get in there but keep tightening and keep your finger between the stuffing and the stitches okay so I'm just gonna do one more and then I'm going to stuff I think I have done four now decreases there we go so I'm just gracing my loop again and I'm really secure of me so I'm putting a stitch mark in it and to now I feel like I need something better suited for the job than my fingers. So I'm actually going to take my scissor and help me shove it in there. You can also use the back of your hook or if you have really slim fingers that works too. <laughs> um, but I'm just doing as I did before. I'm just taking some and making it into a ball. It's easier to get it in there. And then I'm placing it on top of the hole, not in the hole, just on top of it. And going from the side and down with my scissor, I'm gonna keep on pushing it in here, okay? So just helping it in the right direction. It doesn't feel like I'm in the hole, but I know that I am because the stuffing is disappearing. <laughs> and now it popped back up because I laughed. Don't laugh. So just keep pushing it down. And if it doesn't go in, you have too much and then you have to stop and take some out. But I think this will be good. I just have to move this around. There we go. To find where to really, really push it in there. So you want to stuff it now. I don't know what happened. This was a magical stuffing. I think I only need one more. Um, but you want it to be quite firm to the touch because if you want to do it as a needle cushion or something, you want it to be quite thick. I'm still, can you tell the difference? Mushy, not so mushy. So a little bit more, a little bit more. You can always do a final push in at the very, very end. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm waiting a little bit longer. So I'm just finishing my decreases and then I'm going to do the final stuffing. Okay, so we do have one, two, three more to go. Oh, I had done four. Great. So just checking where to go next. Here. And now I should really place my, my... Sorry, do you even see what I'm doing? Sorry. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking my thread, tightening up and just preparing to do the final decrease, keeping my fingers somewhat between. I don't think I'm able to do that anymore. It's really well stuffed now. So I'm just tightening and going through. There we go. And then the final time here. So now you should have seven stitches left. Okay, I really hope that you do. <laughs> Otherwise keep on until you have approximately seven, okay? 
can always cheat in crochet. So what I do now is, I'm actually going to do that just in case I fumble. I'm just gonna, I'm keeping the thread in until I have stuffed enough and then I'm going to cut it, okay? Because we're fussing it off and I'm going to show you the magical way to, to make it really, really invisible. I do love the effect of it. So just, oops. Make sure that your scissor is closed so you don't accidentally cut anything or yourself. Watch your fingers. But just When you think that you have stuffed enough, you usually can do just a tiny bit more. Tiny bit more. Because when you push it in, the air goes out and... <laughs> My kids are screaming in the background. They're out playing in the rain. Amazing. I love it. So yeah, I will stop there. But you can keep on stuffing if you want to until you're happy with the firmness. So I'm going to now cut the thread. I'm going to be kind to myself so I'm going to use quite a lot to fastening off with. I think it's about maybe 20 centimeters. I might be right, I might be wrong. So what I do now is simply just pull out the tail and thread a needle. And now we are going, do you see the stitches here? All the seven stitches around here is the heads lying. There's the last one. There we go. And what we will do is going from the outside and in, working only in the loops closest to us, the front loops here. So just one, two, Three, don't tighten. Four. Five. Six. And then seven. And tighten. So it should be like a drawstring. Like this. Just closing it up gorgeously. Love this technique. So what you do now to fastening off, because you don't want it back and forth here, it will look, it will be really a shame on this lovely little closing. So what you will do is taking your needle and just go through a stitch somewhere else on the bubble. Don't pull too tightly because you don't want to misshape it. But just go back down into the same space, but out on somewhere else. Because by doing this, we are creating meshes means <laughs> for the yarn to get stuck in the stuffing and I have never ever had a thread go up or out by doing this. This is the best way for stuffed things because it really hooks on to the, the fibers. So just do this a few times and then when you are happy you can either continue on till you are out of yarn or you can do, I'm tired of this now, so <laughs> I'm going to, I, I think it's quite secure though. I might have ever done it with a 20 centimeter thread. But what I do is I simply push down on my make while pulling on the end and then keeping the tension, cutting close to my work, I simply just shape it a bit because then the thread goes right back in there and you have no idea where it is in here. So there we have it. Our blooming bubble is finished. Can you tell? I haven't even shaped the petals. They did it themselves as they usually do. Trustworthy little technique. <laughs> but I hope you have had lots of fun. I hope you learned something new. I hope you will have good use of your blooming bubbles if you use them as decoration, stress bubble, pink cushion, maybe a wool hanging, baby mobile, whatever you do. Please have fun with it and maybe share with us hashtag sisters in stitch or the blooming bubble. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time.